If you've worked with dynamic array formulas in Microsoft 365 or the new Office 2021, you'll have noticed that they're able to spill the results to multiple cells. And to support this new functionality, we also have a new way to reference those spilled arrays in the form of the hash sign called the spill operator. In this video, I'm going to cover this new spill operator and share some advanced ways you can use it in formulas and data validation. So stick around to the end. Here I've got a table of data. Now let's say I wanted to get a list of the categories from the category column. I can use the unique function to return me a distinct list. And as I press enter, you'll see the results spill to the cells below where I entered the formula. Now I can tell this is a spilled array because it has a blue border around it when I have a cell in that array selected. The minute I move outside the array, the border goes away. So this is a spilled array. Now, let's say that I wanted to reference this spilled array in a formula. For example, maybe I want to count the number of items in that unique list. Well, I can use the count a function and then I can reference the very first cell in that spilled array. And with the new spilled array operator, the hash sign, notice as soon as I append it to the first cell reference, I am now selecting that entire spilled array. So anytime that spilled array updates, this formula is automatically going to pick up those new cells. For example, if we change accessories here to parts, you can see parts is now in my spilled array and my count has updated. I'm going to undo that change to parts for now so I can use it again in another example. Now another way to reference a spilled array rather than typing it in manually is to use the mouse. So again we'll use count A and then as soon as I select the entirety of that array you can see the cell reference changes to include that hash sign. If I select less than all of the cells in the spilled array it reverts back to a regular cell range but once they're selected, it inserts it for me. Now I can close my formula, press enter, and it will update when that spilled array updates. All right, let's look at other ways we can use the spilled array operator. Let's say I wanted to set up a dependent data validation list that restricts the products to only those that match the item selected in the category dropdown. So for example, here I have the clothing category selected, so I see a list of clothing products. If I change the category to say accessories, then I get a list of accessories. So let's take a look at how we set this up. A key thing to be aware of is that data validation lists, if we take a look here, this source field only accepts a cell reference or a reference to a range of cells or a formula that returns a reference to a range of cells. Therefore, we need to build the lists for the data validation to refer to in the worksheet. And that's what I'm going to do in these cells here. Let's start with the list of categories. Now I want them to go across the columns. So I'm going to use transpose and then unique to give me a list of the categories. They're going to act as my headers. Now I'm ready to set up the data validation list for the categories. So in this cell here on the data tab, data validation. Again, we want list and the source is going to be this cell here. And then in order to access the spilled array, I just append the hash sign. Click OK. And then you can see the list of different categories. If I change a category, you can see it's now added here. And if we look at the drop down for the data validation, we also have it here. Next, I need to generate the list of products underneath these headings. And for that, I'm going to use the filter function. So I'm filtering the list of products where the category equals the category here. If I have no results returned, I'm going to return a blank rather than an error. So there's my clothing product lists. I'm just going to copy that across and I'm going to allow for growth. We're going to go out to column N paste in those formulas and now we have the list of products for each category. And now I'm ready to set up the data validation lists for the products. I'm going to use the XLOOKUP formula to return the reference to the relevant product list based on the category selected. But before we put it into a data validation list, I'm just going to pop it in a cell here so we can see what it returns. So I want to look up the category in this row here and I'm going to allow for growth. And we're returning, let me move that out of the way. 
the product lists that are in row 18. Now I'm not selecting all of the cells, just the first row. Close parentheses on XLOOKUP and press enter. Now notice I only get the first product returned, which makes sense. I only referenced the first row, row 18. But if I append the spilled array operator and then press enter, I get all of the items. And if I change this to a different category, the XLOOKUP returns the correct list. Now XLOOKUP is a clever function in that it can return a result as we see here, but it can also return a reference to a range of cells. And that means we can use this formula in our source list for the data validation. So I've just copied it to the clipboard. Let's delete it. Go and insert the data validation list. And for the source, I'm going to paste in my formula. Let's select them all and make them all absolute with the F4 key. Click OK. And now we have the data validation list that updates based on the item selected. Now you might be wondering why in the XLOOKUP formula, I didn't reference the spilled array here with the hash sign. I could have done and then selected just this row, close parentheses, and again, finish with the hash sign. And it appears to work. It gives me the correct list. And if I choose clothing, I get it returned. However, if the size of this range changes, for example, if I change this back to accessories, we now get an error. And that's because the lookup array and the return array are different sizes. So instead of referencing a spilled array here, I've referenced right through to column N. And likewise for the return array, I'm referencing out to column N. That just allows for growth in my spilled array up here. All right, let's look at another clever way of using the spilled array operator. Another way we can use the spilled operator is by appending it to a defined name. For example, we can define a name by the formulas tab, define name. Let's call it products. And in here, we can again use the XLOOKUP formula to look up the category selected here in the range of cells here. And let's go out to column N again and return the array in row 18, close parentheses. Now we can use this with the spilled array operator or without. I'm going to show you without. So here I've got the same formula. The only difference is I don't have the spilled array operator on the end. So let's click OK. And then let's just take a look at what this defined name returns. So again, you can see it's only returning the first item in the spilled array. However, if we append the spilled array operator, we now get all of the results. And that means we can also use it in data validation. So let's set that up, data validation. In here we want a list and the source is going to be my defined name. So F3 to bring up the list, click OK. And here I just need to append the spilled array operator. And now we get the same results. Now the purpose of this tutorial was to illustrate the different ways we can use the spill operator. There's no benefits to either way. It's really what you're most comfortable working with. I hope you're excited to give the new spilled array operator a try. You can download the file for this lesson from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. Why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful? Thanks for watching.